Which position is better or worse than we thought when the season started? Mid-season superlatives, locked on Badgers. Let's go. You are locked on Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, Badger fans? Welcome to Lockdown Badgers, your team every single day, part of Lockdown Podcast Network. I'm your host, Ryan Herrings. Really do appreciate every single person tuning in, wherever you are, or however you're finding us. Thank you so, so much. Today's episode brought to you by FanDuel. Place your first $5 bet, and you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. Again, this is Lockdown Badgers, your first listen every single day. And let's bring on Rajiv. We all have Gin Rajiv on, always talking Badgers, football and basketball, which is coming up quickly. I love this idea that you came up with for today's show. Which positions were halfway through the season? This stuff goes by so fast. I know. It's it's six games already. It's crazy. Scary, man. Which positions right now do we feel better, worse, or the same at? Uh, Based on our preseason expectations, we're going to go offense, defense, take turns leading it off. Um, Rajiv, let's start with quarterback. I'll let you lead this one off. Better, worse, or the same than what you expected? This is an interesting one, right? Because, you know, we lose our starting quarterback, but I... I'm actually a little higher on it, truthfully, just because I'll tell you why. It's because I think Phil Longo is getting out of Braden Locke what I think we never, we haven't, we didn't see from TVD in the first couple of games. Um, obviously, we haven't seen from, we didn't see from Locke right away, but now it's like the maximization of the position output is happening, or at least it's, it's trending that way. And the other thing I would say is that I feel like Locke is very teachable and very coachable. And you can see that in the improvements that he's already made so far. And that, you know, he's looking off safeties a little more. He's not telegraphing his passes. He's finding passing lanes, moving in the pocket. He's, you know, he's, he's his pocket presence overall. Like he's really, he's really growing every game and you can see the coachable moment. So I feel like I am, I am, I do feel better off. Now I did have high expectations for, for Tyler Van Dyke as well, but honestly, the last two weeks have just make me so excited about what we're seeing from the quarterback play that I kind of do feel higher about it now. I know that's kind of weird to say right away, but that's just how I feel like right now. I'm like, I'm pretty confident with with the, with the 18 back there. I'm feeling like we're in a good spot as long as he can keep clean and not make the dumb mistakes, which he's shown that he's he's adept at doing. I feel good about it. Yeah, I, I like the vibes right now. I love the vibes right now. I love the confidence right now. I still think it's a push for me. Like, I still think... We all, if, I'm trying to think back to our conversations preseason for the quarterback spot. We all expected a jump from year one to year two. We expected a better passing attack. We expected more downfield shots. We're just kind of getting that with lock instead of TVD. And I think in that sense, it feels like a bit of a push. I also internally try to continue pointing out that the last two games produced pretty bad. Rutgers kind of folded. And even in those two, like even in our high water moment so far, Braden Luck, it's been the last two games, four touchdowns, three picks. Right, even even in this, there's been a little bit of pause in moments. I feel really good about him, but I expected to feel better about the quarterback spot in general. So to me, it's kind of lining up with I see improvement. I feel better about it. I don't think it's better necessarily than I thought it would be. Yeah, I think part of the reason I think that is because we were while we had expectations for TVD, we also were very like we're not sure which version of Tyler Van Dyke we're getting. We're not sure if it's really going to work, and because after the after Mordecai's start last year wasn't very, you know what what we had hoped it would be. But I think with Locke, I feel like we just know we're getting now. And I think there's some calm and sort of like, you know, ease with that because you're like, yep, okay, we know what we have now. We might not have an NFL guy, but we've got a guy that we feel like can win us games. And I mean, when you put up 52 and 42, I guess you're feeling pretty damn good about your quarterback. (laughs) Yeah, no doubt about it. Like the last two have been incredible. And one more, like another one against Northwestern. And I think I probably revised this. I just need, I feel like I need a little bit more data. But there's nothing to complain about the last two weeks, even though I just complained about touchdown and interception <laughs> ratio. Strike that. Um, let's go to running back. I'll take this one first. I have I have a push on this one too. And again, it's I think what Tylee Walker has looked incredibly second in the Big Ten in rushing touchdowns. Katie Akimeli is shot out of a cannon like in a carnival. We're seeing Darren Dupree. We're seeing Dylan Jones. We're seeing the depth we talked about. But I also expected this running back room to be really good. I expected Tyree Walker, based on what we saw in Platteville, to be doing this kind of stuff. Um, I didn't expect Katie Akimeli to be this good, but I also expected Ches Malusi to be better. I think, to me, it's a push. It's a strong group, and I thought it would be a strong group. Completely agree. Same for me. I just feel like, yeah, you've what you've lost, you've gained 
which is a total push in the, in this scenario. And I think that, you know, yeah, you're right about Kate Yakimoli. What a, what a pleasant surprise he's been, right. I mean, just been, and, and daring Dupree and getting the carries that he's getting. Um, and honestly, like when Chez left, I mean, our production did increase. It's not like it's, it's not, I'm not saying that he couldn't have produced well in the last couple of weeks anyway, because we were playing Purdue and Rutgers, but I do think, yeah, that the hype sort of where we are now is about where we thought we'd be a very good, effective running team that might not have huge, long, heavy hitters, but we're definitely, it's something we can lean on. And that's where I, I feel like we are there still. Yep. It's, it's been way different than you and I thought probably, probably about what Justin thought. Um, yeah. I think we both expected Chess to be there, but yeah, ultimately overall, the aggregate is still a pretty good rushing attack led by those running backs on the offensive line. Tight ends. Rajiv, your turn. Hey, I'm going to go lower on tight ends. Um, I just thought that it would be a little bit more sort of involved in the offense. Now, they've done okay, and they, they, they've produced a little bit, but I just, I guess I kind of thought Ashcraft would take a little slightly bigger jump and just be more involved in, in, and kind of show that he's got that experience and he's bringing it to the group. And they've been fine. They, they haven't been bad. They, they haven't been great. They're just kind of fine. But I still expected them to take a jump that I really didn't see, so I'm going to go a tick lower on tight end. Yeah, for the third one in a row, I'm going push. I swear I have some spicy takes coming up. I'm not taking <laughs> shots. But I, I I expected them to be kind of, eh, like just kind of there. But this is, again, I, I think before the season, I repeatedly said, and I think this is true, This is we're still like a year away from this tight end group being a bigger part of the offense. So – I don't think they've been great. They've been a little non-existent at times, although we saw some flashes the, the last two weeks of getting a little more involved at least, but they've been kind of what I thought they would be, which is an auxiliary part of this offense, taking a backseat behind most of the other spots. So this is kind of what I thought would happen, and it's kind of played out. I wish we would see a little more from Ashcraft, or I wish, wish maybe one of the younger guys would step in. Uh, Grant Steck got a couple reps, but he's obviously not quite there. It's been about what I thought. Um, let's go receivers. I'll take this one. I'm actually going worse. And I'm, I'm curious if if you're there. Yeah, I see I see the take. Um, I'll, I'll say this. Coming into the season, I thought Will Pauling might be the best slot receiver in the Big Ten. Will Pauling, is, I think, leads the team in drop percentage. He has been a, to me, it's, again, based on expectation. To me, he's been maybe the biggest disappointment on the team. That's because I know he's really freaking good. I know he's a dude. Him not playing up to that standard, to me, is a big deal. Tretch not being able to break out right away. Um, taking a while to get going. Bryson Green now being hurt. Um, CJ Williams the first couple weeks had some drops. I love what Vinny Anthony's shown and Tretch is starting to get involved. But ultimately, this was a group that I thought would be pretty good, led by what I thought was a star in Will Pauling. And he hasn't lived up to that expectation. And if your best player doesn't live up to that expectation, I think the rest of the unit takes a drop down. Well, so for me, it's a push. And I was kind of shaking my head a little bit because I think that similar to the running back room, like what you said earlier about that, I think that the loss that you had with, I agree, Pauling certainly has been what we expected, but I think Vinny Anthony makes up for that. I mean, he is a, he, we all of a sudden are stretching the field. We've got a major deep threat, like a big time deep threat. Mm -hmm. And some, I mean, Locke is just, they're, they're in lockstep. And I, I just feel like, and then of course, the, the, the explosiveness that we've seen from Tretch, um, is what we expected, but ultimately, as I look at the group, while I'm a bit lower on Pauling, I'm kind of same on, or kind of a push on Green, uh, maybe a little tick lower on Green, but ultimately, the rest of them, like Vinny, way higher, Tretch higher in the sense that he's actually producing. So yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much a straight push here, but I would say like I'm leaning more towards the higher side rather than like the lower side for sure. Yeah, and that's totally fair. I, I would ask you this though, like, uh, did I think we expected Tretch to kind of do this, right? Like, I know you said you have to see it, but I think the preseason expectation was that he would be an explosive guy. Yeah, and I think it's just that, like, seeing it in person makes me feel better about it because I, it was an unknown, kind of like the TVD thing. It was such an unknown that I may have expected one thing, but, I mean, honestly, the last few weeks, like that, that obviously long touchdown he had, some of the plays that he's made, I expected them, but seeing them with my own eyes and actually them come to, coming to fruition – makes me just feel better about the position, which is why I'm I'm like kind of the stock up right now on it because it's actually happening. It's not like for the last couple of years, we've hyped up a lot of players that didn't really materialize. And I feel like we've done that with Tretch, but it actually came true, which is why I'm feeling good about it. Okay, no, that's fair. Um, offensive line, kick it over to you. I mean, higher all day. <laughs> this has just been, this this unit is fantastic. I mean, Jack Nelson, Talk about a guy that just was like, you know, penalized last year. So many issues. The line is working so well together. I mean, Malman and Nelson on the ends are just doing a great job. Renfro, 
He's healthy. I mean, knock on wood, these guys are healthy. And then the guards, Bruner and Huber, just they're crushing it. I just feel like plat pass blocking, some of the best grades we've had in a long time. Um, run blocking has been good. Like this is just a dependable unit. And as long as the five of them can stay healthy, which knock on wood again, they are. And we've got guys like Kevin Haywood coming up and like doing good things too. I I'm way higher on this group. This group is fantastic and I love everything that they've done. Yeah, they're they're road graders. I absolutely love them. I will caveat this again. This is based on what we thought these this was before the season. I thought this group would be really good, the starting five. I thought the tackles would be better than last year. I thought Renfro back was a big deal. Even then, they're better than I like. Mm-hmm. They are so good. And I think a lot of credit to Coach Blase coming in and, and helping group coaches group up. But those tackles are just rock solid. And if you have two rock solid tackles and then veterans on the inside and an athletic mauler like like Bronner starting to get into it, this line is, has dominated. It even against good fronts they they played really well against bama like this this line has been the best part of this team stock up absolutely for sure all right we're gonna take one quick break there we're gonna come back talk defensive position spot by spot but first a quick break for our friends of the show all right we're gonna take one quick break for our great friends of the show and then we're gonna jump back into this conversation but first today's episode is brought to you by our incredible friends over at FanDuel. FanDuel is awesome right now nfl fans if you bet five dollars you get two hundred dollars bonus bets back guaranteed when you place your first five dollar bet FanDuel.com is incredible. The official sports book of the Locked On Podcast Network, the biggest sports book out there. They are amazing and awesome. And you know that feeling when you hit a home run bet, that three-team parlay, that four-team parlay, maybe it's a five-teamer and you're sealing the deal with Tywee Walker reaching over the end zone as you're screaming in the stands, seeing the dollar signs raining from the sky. I mean, I don't know that feeling because I don't ever hit parlays, but I'm sure there's people out there that do. And if you're going to hit those parlays, head over to FanDuel.com to do it again. A $5 bet gets you $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Spice up your weekend do it responsibly as always but it is the best platform parlays teasers future spreads if you were betting on the badgers this is the place you have to do it again do it responsibly but spice up your weekend with the official sports book of the lockdown podcast network that's over at fanduel.com all right let's jump back into this show all right let's jump onto the defensive side of this i'm so excited for some of these spots because i am like up or down i'm literally like just about every one yeah defensive line up up like, I still listen. It's still what it is. It's still not the defense line this team is going to need to win a Big Ten title, to win, to get in the playoffs and make noise. But I, I, I'll i own it, right? I didn't think this unit would be this good. We're coming off a Rutgers game where they shut down a team that has a good running back that wants to run the ball. Elijah Hill is one of my, my biggest concerns with this unit. And I said it is, I don't know if we have a dude. Like, I don't know if we have a guy who can get disruption. Elijah Hills, he's a dude. Like, on the interior, which is one of the hardest things you could find. Already has a couple sacks. Three TFLs, um, and I think they're stouter than I thought. I think it's a little deeper than I thought, and I think they have a dude in Hills. Stock up. Same, 100% the same, especially when you factor in the fact that JTJ was missing before the season, and we were like, oh, boy. So our our best defensive lineman from last year is not even going to be playing now. So, yeah, to me, c- clear as day higher. They've been – a, you know, a, a often discussed unit on this team and generally discussed in a negative light, at least all summer. All they've done is come out here and, yeah, shut down, you know, not be amazing, but just shut down good running games, getting a little bit of pressure. They still need to improve. But from expectations to now, they've definitely exceeded them higher. 100%. Um, I split up the linebackers, so I'm going to mm-hmm. kick it over to you on, in splits here. Let's start with inside linebacker. That's what I have next on my list. Rajiv, up, down, in the middle. I'm in the middle um, on inside linebackers. I think that it was – I kind of was like – the same sort of leaning towards lower just because Jake Cheney hasn't really been the guy that, that we kind of expect him to be. But Jaheim Thomas, although he got a bit of a slow start, he's been fairly productive. And I think the other middle linebackers coming in Allegro and Tackett, certainly I'm glad they're getting more playing time and they've been effective. So I'm going to overall, I'm going to do a push on the inside. Yeah, I'm, I'm going down on this one. Uh, I, I really thought Cheney would play better to, to kick up, not, not just to this point right now with the kick off the year i thought he would be like that leader that lighthouse kind of in the middle of this defense he knows it he's a coach's kid I, he's faster bigger those inside linebackers struggled early and now while i agree with you jaheen thomas to me has flipped that switch like jaheen thomas looks like the sec version of thomas he's the number one rated rush defender on this team for pro football focus at 81.4 i think he's come along i love everything i see about christian allegro like if you just you don't even need to watch football. Just watch him, and you're like, oh, that guy looks pretty good at that game. I don't know. Like, if you'd never watched football, I love him. But he doesn't get enough reps, really, for me to raise this grade mm-hmm. higher. And because of where I thought Cheney would be, I have to be lower on this position overall. Uh, let me go to outside linebacker, unless you had anything else to add there. No, no, I'm good. 
outside linebacker, I'm down. Uh, I really thought that this would be the group that would provide that pass rush, that electricity, that disruption off the edge. And while I think Daryl Peterson is probably coming off his best, one of his best games as a Badger, and Lowry has had moments, there's three total sacks from the outside linebackers, from the Pius, the Lowry, Peterson group. That has to be the pass rushers on this unit, the way this defense is constructed. Pius, I expected more from, quite frankly. Uh, Lowry, I expected more disruption from. And I just don't think we've seen it to the level that we expected it. I kind of highlighted the ones that I thought were like the most like an improved. Like, so outline was a big one for me. And there's another one later. That's a big one, but this is my biggest lower one. This is the, to me, this is the unit that I'm like, man, and for all the things you just said, I mean, there's just not enough production. And I mean, Lowry and Pius, there were just so many people that we were excited about. And we knew that, that it was going to be better than last year. And for the most part, I think it has, they are a more improved unit to what we had last year as far as the speed and the ability to have that disruption. But as far as doing it consistently, that's what we've missed and that's what we expected. Therefore, because that consistency is not there and that like, you know, constant sort of level of disruption isn't there, they've got to be lower. And honestly, all the positions, they're the one that is the, the most has most has gone the most down. Yeah, that's, that's a great, I didn't do that, but it would be, that would be the same for me. Uh, outside linebackers would be my spot of biggest. Yeah. Difference decrease. from what I expected, sure. my biggest delta. Yeah. And my biggest increase, by the way, of delta on the positive side would be defense line for me. I just, I'm blown away by how much stouter they look. And I, I love it. And we always say this on this show like good, better, and different. We just want this team to do well. Like we give our honest takes. But if that means I'm wrong and the team is better, hell yeah. Like more yeah. of that, please. 100 I was, I was happy that, you know, even though I only predicted a very sh small six point win at Rutgers. More than happy to have yes. a 35 point victory, just no problem. A hundred percent. There's so many people out there that just want to be right so badly, they would rather have the team be bad or like, I, please. See, I, yeah. I'll be wrong every single time if the badgers are better. Yep. All right. Yep. Uh, cornerback, let's kick this one to you. Yeah. So this is kind of the same for me. I mean, I, I'm happy with I expected Hallman to be good. I expected Forkwin to be good. Forkwin's been a little better than I thought it, honestly. And I just feel like we're right where we expected to be. I, I think the you know, they're in a, they're a good unit. I'm um, right. And they, they, they're, de, you know, they're a unit that we de, can depend on. If we're blitzing and we need to put them on, on an Island. So that's fine. Like they can do that. I trust that group. And I think I trusted them before the season. I trust them now. I'm I'm up on cornerback. Actually. I, I thought this would also be a good group, but I don't think I expected as high as I was on Xavier Lucas, who was my number two ranked when we did our kind of individual ranks, we aggregated it. He was my number two guy in the 25, 24 class. So super high. I didn't expect him to come in per again per pro, pro football focus. He leads the team in pass coverage great right yes, now. Yes, he does. I, yeah. I did not expect him to come in and, and have this type of immediate impact. And then I still think Rico's good. Uh Forkren has been even more physical than I thought. He's a great downhill blowing up plays, shedding blockers. I thought this unit was be good, would be good. I think they're even a little better than I thought. That's fair. I mean, I I can definitely hear that argument for sure. Um, I if you before the season started, I'm like, what? Where's the strength of our team? Well, this this is this this was the strength of our team. So and like they've they've done that. They've been they've been perfectly fine for me. Yep, hundred uh, percent. Safeties. I have a push on this one. Um, I expected more from Hunter Wohler. And again, this goes back to my Will Pauling thing. It's not that Wohler's been bad because he hasn't. Like Wohler's still one of the, the anchors of this team. He's incredibly talented. But I expected a few more disruptive plays. I expected the tackles to go on, which they have, because I think the linebackers are cleaning more of that up. We're definitely faster at that level. He's missing more tackles than I thought he would. Hunter Roller's missing about 13, 14, 15% of tackles this year. That's kind of a bump up. Um, there was that obviously one against USC. Of course, they were also on the field for like 85 plays that game. But I expected him to be more the star of the team. And instead, he, looks, he doesn't look quite as explosive as he did last year. Now, Zachman looks great. Zachman looks incredible, which is why I'm pushing it. I thought this unit would be good. I still think they're good. I just expected a little bit more of Wohler, and I think Zachman instead has kind of evened that gap out a little bit for me. Completely agree with you that, you know, like I put, I put same. It's just literally just, you know, a little bit lower on a Wohler, a little bit higher on Zachman. The unit itself is producing a, pretty much what I thought it would produce as far as tackles and, and, and disruption plays could be a little bit better, but yeah, I mean, to me, it's a, it's a simple push for this one. The entire secondary really is for me. Yeah. I think that's fair. Cause we coming into the season that was expected to be really the strength of the, the team is that secondary mm -hmm. group. And I think they played very well overall. How about special teams? So I broke it up a little bit. 
Okay, uh, go ahead. Special teams. So the kicker, I basically said same. I feel like, you know, overall kicking is same. But punter is my highest growth from preseason because Atticus Bertrams has been, he's been great, man. Like he's doing what he has to do. And yeah, he's got some of those bounces were a little bit lucky and fortuitous at times, but you know what? That happens. And, and, and muffed punts, it's not necessarily all the puncher, but sometimes it is sometimes like mm-hmm. the, 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 where they're punting and the, the rotation they have on the ball can affect some of that stuff. I, I feel like he's been one of the better weapons that we've had. So I'm really high on the punting and I'm pretty much the same on kind of I'm on the kicking as far as the, the other, the other part of special teams, I'm a little lower on because the muff punts that we've had have been bad. So I'm kind of a mixed bag in special teams, but kudos to Atticus Bertrams. What a, what a great year he's having. Yeah. I love that you broke it up, man, to give him credit. Um, Cause I kind of just lumped it all together. And when I lump it all together, I have like these two extremes orbiting each other, right? You have all these muffed punts and you have some missed field goals on one end. And on the other end, you have Atticus Bertram looking like a hall of fame punter. Like he looks like an Iowa guy. Yeah. And, they just kind of come together in the middle of that's like, eh, push. I don't know. I don't know how to really grade that. But Bertrams has been incredible. 100% agree. They got to catch punts, though. They got to catch punts because it's going to kill them, man. And eventually it's a trend. Eventually you stop saying, oh, that's a weird one off. Eventually it's a trend and it's an issue. Uh, and here's the other thing I was talking to Curtis about this tight game on the road. We have to kick a 38 yarder to win it or to tie it. Do you feel good about that right now with the way we've kind of been inconsistent in that spot? Because I don't. That's a worry to me. I still do, honestly. Yeah. I, I don't I don't really have much of a concern. I mean, I know he missed the kick at Rutgers, but that's apparently it was windy. I don't know. It's a you're gonna miss some, but he's also made some pretty big kicks too. And I just feel like I'm okay with him. I, I think I, I do really feel confident. I, for the I'm kind of for the first time in a while, I feel like, yeah, I've I feel like if, if we need to go out there and hit a 47 or 48 yarder, I think he's going to do it. So I, I don't really have too much concern with uh, with Bacchus. Also missed one against Western Michigan, but yeah. you're, you're right. He's nailed some as well. He's also nailed some. And you got it. And like, and it's, this is the college game, right? It's just different. You're going to have some of those. And I thought that like when he had his, like his, his big makes were big makes too. Like he, he hits, hits them in good spots. No, no, that's very fair. Um, we're going to take one more quick break. We're going to come back. We have some mid-season superlatives, including the most overhyped Big Ten team right now. It's not the Badgers. We're going to talk about that next, coming up Locked on Badgers. All right, we're going to take one quick break for our friends of the show. Get back to this incredible episode. Today's episode is brought to you by our amazing friends over at Hims. Listen, life is a blender of spontaneous moments. You can be sitting there on the couch, having the IPA, a bowl of Cheetos in front of you. Then you watch Kenzel Doe go ahead and house upon return. Or you see Graham Mertz look like Dan Marino in his first action. Or you see S- Slam Sam Decker catch an oop and bring it home. And you want to be ready in those moments. That's what Hims is here for. Hims is changing men's health care by providing you with access to affordable sexual health treatments from the comfort of your couch. The process is 100% online. There's no need for uncomfortable doctor's visits, no insurance is needed, and one low price covers everything from treatments to ongoing care with hundreds of thousands of trusted subscribers. Hims gets helps you find the ED option that works for you. For when those those Kenzel Doe, Melvin Gordon magical moments hit, you want to be ready for those. Start your free online visit today at hims.com slash locked on. That's hims.com, H-I-M-S.com slash locked on for your personalized ED treatment options at hims.com slash locked on. The products mentioned are chewable compounded products, which are not approved or verified for safety or effectiveness by the FDA. Prescriptions require an online consultation with healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate restrictions do appro- apply. See website for details and important safety information. Subscription required. Price varies based on products and subscription plans. All right, let's get back into this incredible show. All right, man. Before we get started with our midseason superlatives, where can people um, find what you guys are doing, you and Justin? Yeah, the Bucky Report on YouTube, um, Twitter, wherever you can get your podcasts and uh, you know we're on here as much as we can be as well it's been it's just great doing both the shows yeah i love it too and they do great work over there make sure you go check them out follow them both on twitter justin just did a scouting report on on mock as well the 2026 quarterback make sure you go check out everything those guys are doing all right mid-season superlatives ready well again same thing we'll bounce this back and forth what's your best moment so, so far this is kind of unique it came out in a loss but it was a moment for me because i was at the game i was at the usc game the 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 and how many times in the first few weeks did we complain about lack of stretching the field, lack of the deep balls? Man, that and that first quarter throw to Vinny Anthony got me up off my seat and going absolutely nuts. And I cherish moments like that when I can just scream and go crazy and feel so much joy because I think that <clears throat> we spend so much time talking about our team that those moments of joy just get lost sometimes. And 
that I was elated in that moment because I was standing right behind the ball. Like I literally saw the path. He was right behind lock and it was just the most gorgeous thing. And I was like, this is awesome. And yeah, I, that's my best moment of the season, even though it was a loss, what an epic play. And I just, I loved it. Cause I was like, finally we're doing it. And it was, yeah, I, I'm still smiling thinking about it. That's a great one, man. Uh, for me, it's, it's going to be the Rutgers game in general, just, just because it feels so good to come out of the abyss and the Purdue game felt like a potential one-off. Like it, it could really easily just be Purdue sucks. Like Purdue's a terrible program. You get two in a row and you go on the road and you just pummel that team. And then the, everything around the, the, the conversation with the Badgers in our, in our discord, on Twitter, on the show, everything feels like a weight is lifted a little bit. And it just feels so good to be optimistic and celebrate like a really great moment and everything in that game. To me, that's my best moment so far. I think our best moment is going to be the Penn state game, which is coming up. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but to me so far, it's the Rutgers game. Uh, worst moment. I've got two. I'm curious if you're going to say my other one. I'm just going to say my one, the muff punt USC. It, my whole soul sank into the depths of the earth when that happened. Cause it felt like we, I still Kind of wonder if we just catch that punt if we win that game. I don't know. It felt like, oh, right, this is one of those moments. That's it. We're now going to lose. And it was just such a deflating moment for me. I remember just in my living room, just my head sinking into my hands, man. Um, that's my worst moment. That was just a heartbreaker for me. Yeah, I mean, for me, that's funny because I was at that game and I, I, I was – I wish I was sitting in my living room in that moment because I had a bunch of USC fans barking at me and I'm like, God, so my, I have two. So TVD injury is, is one for me for sure. Just because you talk about the deflating moments, like seeing your quarterback who, by the way, had a nice little, nice little start to that game laying there and you just kind of knew non-contact. You just knew I'm like, he's done. And like, maybe if we're lucky, it's a four to six week thing, but it was just like, this is done. And that was really deflating. And the other one, this is kind of weird, but it's like <clears throat> after the Rutgers game, not that I already didn't know, but looking at the schedule and realizing that we have to go to Evanston is our next game. I'm like, oh, like I am so nervous <laughs> for this game on Saturday because I just, this, this place Northwestern just gives us such mm -hmm. trouble on the road. And that's literally that it's like that, that sinking feeling of, I just don't want to lose this game. And that kind of is one of my worst moments of the season because it's just kind of setting up to be this, this like super nerve infested Saturday. Yeah. I'm super nervous for that one too. Give me um, the star being born superlative this season. Yeah. Xavier Lucas. There's just no other to me. This is like the clear, I wrote this in like all caps. I'm like, come on. Like this Magic is just it. like, it's just, he, He's such a dude. He looks like he he looks like an NFL player as far as size. Like his physical attributes are insane. And like the what the guy can do and the fact that he's he started out in the first game 13% of the snaps. Now he's at 57% of the snaps. Like he's he's increasing his workload every week, his dependability. He's a true freshman. Hello. Like that doesn't happen in this game unless you go to schools like Alabama and Georgia. You see people like that that are like these prodigies that can just come into play. And I, I feel like Xavier Lucas just looks like a dude. And two, three years from now, he he's, I mean, I think he is going to be in, he's going to be in the NFL and he is going to be a guy that we look back on and say, yeah, this is one of the best, you know, cover corners we've, we've ever had. Yeah. So that's who I wrote down as well. But for this, for the sake of shifting, I think that's such an easy one. I'm going to go Kevin Haywood though, who has, has already come in in meaningful reps as a true freshman on the road. Um, and there were some moments where he is just stonewalling people as a true freshman tackle in the he big looks 10. So big out there too. <laughs> He's a unit. And listen, there's some iffy reps because he's a true freshman. But you know what most true freshmen are doing? They're sitting on the bench for two years before they even get game ready. He's already out there mauling people at times. I think either of those guys, great answers. I had Lucas as well, but definitely always here to give Kevin Haywood some shout-outs too. Yeah. Um, newcomer of the year, let's say not without saying Xavier Lucas. Yeah, so for me, it's Elijah Hills as far as newcomer to the team. Not necessarily freshman, but yeah, I mean – Three tackles for loss, two sacks. He plays about 50% of the snaps. He is by far the most disruptive defensive lineman we have. He has he is the reason that we have made vast improvements and we we ranked them higher on our earlier segment. And that's it's because of him. And I just feel like no one that's like the newcomer, I just feel like he's made such an impact on a unit that we desperately needed someone to say, I, I got this. I'm gonna take control. And we th this unit was calling out for that. Just imagine what 
this line would do be without him. If we I didn't have to. him, like it would be really porous and it would be our run defense would be much worse. And I mean, Manungai would have run for much many more yards. And I just think that that's, that's a huge thing for us. It's the anchor. It's something that we needed. And Elijah Hills is my guy. Yeah, he's in a bunch of plays, too, that are almost made, right? Um, Rutgers in the end zone almost had a safety there, but he blew up the play. He doesn't get credit. Mm -hmm. He's been phenomenal. Uh, I, actually, in this one, I don't know if I can can use this guy. I went Renfro. Like, really? He didn't play last year, really? He did. Okay. Yeah, well, okay. well, 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 okay. if, if it's not Renfro. I got another one for you, though. Tywee Walker. Tywee Walker's okay. a guy who I, I love. If you go and look at uh, – go look up Oklahoma Sooner Twitter after this week and go – 30% of them are like, oh, Look at Tywee Walker run for 200 yards in the Big Ten. We could use that. Why'd we let him go? It's so it's so fun to see their salty. right? <laughs> yeah, he is. He's awesome. This is a guy I saw in Platteville. This is what I thought he would be from the jump, but he had kind of a daggy injury, and it looks like he's getting back into his rhythm. 198 last week on the road, second in the Big Ten in touch, rushing touchdowns, balance, leverage, power, a little more explosion than I think people give him credit for as well. I'm going to go with Tywee Walker, newcomer of the year. If you don't, let me use Jake Renfro. Um, <laughs> Defensive MVP. I'm, I'm very curious where you're going with this one. Preston Zachman. I think um, he's had such a great year. I mean, 26 tackles, two pass breakups, two interceptions, 3.7 missed tackle percentage. And if you've listened to me talk on missed, I, I, that's a stat that I really focus on. And he's by far, it's the lowest on the team as far as guys who, who get regular tackles. I mean, way better than Hunter Wooler, as we mentioned. And by the way, he had a really good missed tackle percentage last year. Uh, he's being disruptive. He He's like basically saying, hey, I'm, Hunter Waller is not the only safety. I'm here too. And you know I've been high on Zachman for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. I really like him. I really like the energy he brings. So much of, of what those guys do is want. It's heart. It's determination. And he brings that every single game. He's in the right spot at the right time. He's making the right play. Kind of like Hallman last year, just kind of was in the right place at the right time a lot. I think Zachman has been that this year. He's been he's been really good for us. He's I think he's third on on the, on the team in tackles right now. And yeah, so for me, it's it's Zachman. Yeah, same. Preston Zachman. I think he's been the most noticeably most most noticeable player in that back seven. He's making tackles. He's never missing a play. He's more athletic than people give him credit for too. It's so easy to look at him and think, oh, it's another Joel Stelmacher, a four seven five safety who just he's. He's pretty athletic, man. He's rangy. He can cover, but he never misses a tackle. Um, yeah, I think it's Preston Zachman as well. Same boat. Offensive MVP, I'm going to go with Braden Locke. This was hard for me. This was, this was hard for me because I think I look at this. Again, MVP doesn't mean best player, right? We're talking most valuable players, how I looked at it. This last two-game stretch, I think, is sparked by, by Braden Locke. I think those first two games could have been won with Braden Locke as well. I don't know if we're beating Bam or USC either way. I just think his step up, his ability to take shots down the field, changes the entire dynamic of this offense. Changes everything from the running game to how defenses play us to how many people they put in the box. I think it adds a, an element that, for whatever reason, it didn't look like Tyler Van Dyke was going to, and it's not something that Tanner Mordecai was able to do last year. There's something unique about, and it might just literally be the dude has moxie. The dude has swagger and he knows where to go with the ball. I'm going Braden Locke. Yeah, it's a good one. I, I mine's a little more unconventional. It's Jack Nelson. Um, because I just think that like I wanted to say the whole offensive line, but I thought I'd be a little more specific. I he has an 83.6 pass uh block rating on PFF, second best on the team. He's uh and the thing is after last year, how many penalties he had, how many issues he had, like we constantly talked about Jack Nelson and this year we don't talk about him at all because nothing gets by him. He doesn't get penalized. He's steady Eddie out there. He's controlling things on the line. He's, he's protecting the backside. I Jack Nelson and the entire, this could go to the entire offensive line as far as I'm concerned, but I'm going to single out Nelson because frankly of the crap that we gave him last year, look at what he's done now. He's ready for the NFL. Like the guy is just playing so solid. Like, very dependable football. And when you have a left tackle that you know is out there that you can depend on, it makes everything you do as an offense easier. So I got to give love to Jack Nelson. Yeah. Listen, this is what he came back to do, right? Put NFL tape, put NFL tape out into the ecosystem, which is what he's doing. I'm super thrilled for that. Uh, let's go most likely to have a bigger second half than first half. To me, this feels kind of obvious. I'm going Tretch. I, I think it's, I don't know if you have someone else. I just feel like he has rhythm with, with, Braden Locke, and then coupled with Will Pauling now having being banged up, we're not fully sure he's going to get more reps anyway. It feels like an obvious Tretch Kekahuna answer here. So I, I I had Tretch down, but I did have an alternate one just for the sake of discussion, and it's Christian Allegro. Um, so he started out, he's right he's now about like 35, 36% of snaps, and it's slowly been upticking. It was like 19%, then it's been going up. 
And just naturally because of that, I think Christian Allegro is going to continue to have more and more of a, of a part in this team throughout the rest of the season. I think it's going to be interesting. And I, we, I talked to Justin on our show on Sunday about like, you know, one of the comments was like, how about putting him outside a little bit, letting him do some pass rushing and let him moving him around a little bit. He's a versatile guy that's, we know has good speed and just to sort of be a contrarian here, because you're right, Tretch is the obvious answer. I do expect Christian Allegro to have a really good second half of the season, and I expect him to play more because you can see that the snaps are increasing. I mean, he he could absolutely be the MVP of this defense in a couple of years. I mean, he is a guy that has like really like sort of unrealized star potential. He's not really, no one's really talking about it yet, but that guy, I really think he's solid. He's a guy that Justin kind of said he's got a little bit of Leo Chanel in him, and I just... I really like him. I love his his ethic, work ethic, and effort. Um, I expect him to be a, a guy that has a, definitely a big second second half yeah. of the season. I'm smiling for that one because he needs to play more. Like he yeah. just needs to play more. He's too versatile. Like he can drop back in pass coverage. He's physical against the run. He can uh, rush the passer. He's just got to play more. He's too physically talented, man. <laughs> I think it's a great one. Um, your turn here. This is what we're going to finish the show on. Right now, what is the most overhyped team in the Big Ten? I mean, this is a tough one because I, I'm. I want to say Indiana's overhyped just because, but the, the thing is they they haven't lost and they haven't played anybody yet, but may, I got to go with Michigan just because even though Michigan has been not really hyped right now, they're the fact that they're still even some, I, I think they're maybe still be ranked. I think they are ranked. They are ranked. That's 24. garbage. Yeah. Michigan is not good. This team, as I, it's one of my sort of picks of the week this week is Illinois plus three. And the, and the sort of my reasoning there is Michigan is Michigan in name only. The only thing that is, is Michigan about them is their jerseys. Because it's not the way they play. And if that were any other team that looked like that, they would be nowhere close to being ranked. And they'd be like, it's just, they look really bad. And they're extremely one-dimensional. Their defense isn't what we thought it was going to be. So yeah, Michigan just needs to get out of the way. They're just not doing anything for anybody right now. Yeah, that's a great answer. I went back and forth between Michigan and the other team I'll talk about then. I, I thought Michigan would be better, like straight up. I thought their defense yeah. would carry them. And I thought they'd still be able to just pound the rock and, and be kind of, boring Iowa-ish on offense with an elite defense, which can win. But their defense hasn't been as good as I thought, and then the quarterback has been a complete disaster. Um, <laughs> they suck. <laughs> like, we would beat Michigan, for the record. We would yeah. beat um, I'm going to go with Nebraska. I, for some reason, like, Nebraska will play really ugly. And I get this, because Nebraska is kind of always on the precipice of being a media darling because of their 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 fan base, the history. Uh, they have a five-star quarterback that has ties to Nebraska. All of this makes a great storyline. They played a weak, weak schedule, and they've really struggled with Rutgers and really struggled with Purdue. That was an ugly Purdue game that they played, a team that we dropped 50 plus on. You know, they scored 28. Um, Rutgers was a 14 7 game for them, and they got lot lauded, or lauded, lauded. Jeez, Ryan, they got lauded for, oh, what a gritty win against Rutgers. We just murdered Rutgers, you know? So I feel like they're getting credit for like tough wins against teams that I think are kind of sneaky, sneaky bad. And I think we've seen Riola when pressure has come against both Rutgers and Illinois kind of implode a little bit. I think Nebraska is still living a little bit on hype, five-star quarterback and really soft schedule. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's for sure. That was also one I was thinking about too. I just think that Nebraska <clears throat> ultimately they only have one loss and it is to a decent Illinois team. They don't have a bad loss out there. They have won the game they needed to win, but you're right. Like they're, they're about to get found out. Like they've got Indiana this week, which I mean, look, Indiana is preparing like this is the Super Bowl, by the way. They're like hyping this thing up, this super hype train in Indiana, which rightfully so. They've had a good season. Then they've got Ohio State. Then they've got to end the season. It's at USC, home against us, and then at Iowa. Like they're losing a lot of those games. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I think that I can understand why people are excited about Nebraska, given that they've they clearly have taken a step. And Rayola is is he, he's very talented. He's going to be a guy. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, I, I agree with you on that. You can't really argue Nebraska. He is Rajiv. I am Ryan. This is Locked On Badgers. When you're done, to go check out Locked On Big Ten, all the biggest conference news from around the college football Big Ten conference. With that, on Wisconsin, and we will talk tomorrow.